Pyrus would, you know, escape and kill everyone in the world with raining brimstone? We may do as we please, so long as no others are harmed by our actions. Now, I've heard that before the original plot got fucked silly, you originally summoned the Slasher of Veils, the Archdemon who, you know, actually lived in the Abyss. And if nothing else, it makes a fuck ton more sense than Pyros, because at least the Slasher of Veils is alive! What the fuck ever? The Abyss is naturally nothing like you remember it from before, and I think we pretty definitively defined what the Abyss is in the game called the Stygian Abyss. Here, it's just this really uninspired series of areas representing each of the four elements, because the game design is so fucking dirt simple that way. And eventually, you clear the way through to a central teleporter that takes you to the bottom. And it takes for fucking ever, let me tell you. But how did Lord British get to the bottom already ahead of me without clearing all of these areas himself? And don't fucking tell me a wizard did it because I'm a wizard in this game and I fucking didn't. And how did Lord Blackthorn get down here? I should have had you executed low these many years ago, Blackthorn. I suppose that I'll have to do it now. When you reach the bottom of the abyss, you find LB and Blackthorn squaring off for a magical duel to the death. You know, I joked before about Lord British being completely worthless, but Blackthorn really doesn't stand a chance here. In Ultima V, Lord British's crown made you completely impervious to magic. So, you know, I'm thinking this fight won't really last that long. Although, I'd bet you anything the game designers didn't even think of the whole Lord British's crown thing. <laughs> so, Lord British just straight up kicks the dude's ass, you get the codex back, and LB tells you he can send you into the void to cleanse the last shrine of spirituality, but first you need to consult the codex. For some reason, because. And you can only do this on the Isle of the Avatar using the lenses to decode and read it. Which really... REALLY isn't how the lenses work. Because remember, the lenses were created in Ultima 6 and they were made so you could see into the void where the codex had been sent. Not because the codex was in some kind of code or cipher. It wasn't. Anyone could read the fucking book as long as they're on a spiritual quest. And besides, the codex lenses in this game are put on the wrong fucking sides. And I distinctly remember them being a hell of a lot fucking bigger! This isn't some obscure trivia, you know. This is easily verifiable information you'd know if you'd even casually looked over the other fucking guy! It tells you first to create something called the Barrier of Life in the Guardian's Chamber. And really, it mentions the Guardian in the Codex? This really bugs the shit out of me. Who wrote the fucking Codex, anyway? Where the fuck did it come from? I thought Lord British was the dude who came up with the virtues in the first place. Did the Avatar just never bother to sit down and read the whole fucking Codex cover to cover? Would he just get the Cliff's Notes of the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? How does he not know all this? And then once you create the Barrier of Life, you cast the Armageddon spell inside it, and hopefully the Barrier of Life contains the spell. Only now, the Armageddon spell is completely different. Now, to cast it, you need all eight sigils and three pieces of a dimensional gate. This is wrong! Why do you keep changing the fucking rules? These aren't nitpicks. These are major fucking cornerstones of the setting that even people who casually follow the series would notice. I can cast a spell that will temporarily realign the moons. But that could just be a little wobble. And allow you to travel to the void. Oh, so now the moon gates have something to do with the positions of the fucking moons again. Because that's not how they were operating up to this fucking point. So you go into the void and restore the shrine of spirituality. Wait, hang on. Didn't the Guardian just say that the people in Scarabray were immune to the column's influence? That they somehow resisted the column? Wouldn't that mean they kept their spirituality? Am I out of my mind? So if they successfully resisted the column, why is the shrine corrupted? Fucking oops! You did it, Avatar! When you restored the final shrine, I was given my life back!
Well, I don't have a very good memory. You know, I've, I've heard people like uh, can remember the names of their teachers from elementary school. I don't. You know, I, I, I'm bad with faces. I'm bad with names, really. Uh, and I don't. I don't even know what the what how early most people have you know memories but um probably my earliest one of my earliest memories is around the age of must have been three or four we just moved to arizona and um my dad was an engineer and uh, we had this new thing it was this monochrome computer uh five and a quarter inch floppies and uh it was the craziest thing because uh, it could do word processing and it could do spreadsheets. And my dad would work from home, which again was this new thing. You know, you didn't have to use a typewriter. So, um, but w when he was at work, my older brother and I would play on it. And we only had one game. It was probably the first game, probably the first computer game I ever played. And that was, it was Ultima 3. I didn't play the earlier ones until a lot later, but yeah, we played Ultima 3. And um, my brother would play it with me. He he taught me how to play, and I was so young, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, I didn't know the story, and if I, even if he told me, I wouldn't have understood. But, like, you know, all I knew there was, there was there was bad guys on the screen, and we made guys to go beat them up. You know, that was it. But he'd explain what's, what's going on, and, uh, you know, eventually I, I kind of knew, you know, I knew the... Very basic. I knew enough to... He'd, he'd let me play it on my own. He'd let me play his characters on my own and let me level them up and, you know, just get gold because you needed gold, you know, get the exotic weapons and stuff like that. And he didn't get mad if I got his characters killed. And I did that a lot. And he put a lot of time... We all put a lot of time into this, but, you know, I was you know, three or four. You know, it's going to happen. But um, we got... We got so wiped out the first time we went into Castle Exodus, by the floor, you know, there was a, there'd be dragons and demons in there, and they could do this thing that was, your character could be dead or incinerated, and if he was incinerated, you needed, like, the highest level magic to bring him back. You needed a great holy man. And, uh, but the thing that kicked our asses was the floor. We, uh, we must have gotten wiped out, like, shit, like, six, seven, eight times. And, uh, that was... <laughs> We we played like all the, we played everything. We played Ultima Four, and I was older, of course, and he helped me understand the story and how it was different and what I was doing. And um, I, I don't know if you believe that's basically how I learned to read was the Ultima games. It, it, you know, I wouldn't recommend it as a course, but that's just how it went. You know, I I just read what was going on on the screen a lot. It was very simple terminology and stuff like that. It was the first words I was really reading. And it got me interested in all sorts of stuff. You know, it kind of helped shape my interest today. It got me interested in sci-fi, fantasy. I wanted to read more about characters like this, what was going on. Got me interested in D&D. You know, I was reading Tolkien when other kids were struggling with the Hardy Boys. You know, I was, I was reading D&D &D books at, at recess when other kids were playing around with Foursquare. And that got me in a lot of trouble. But, um... My older brother and I, we must have played everything up to Ultima 6 while we were living under the same roof. And and uh, then he moved away to college. He moved away. And But that was our thing when we were together. You know, he, and he didn't... What I, what I really 